This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Nokia Lumia 2520. Yes, it's a Lumia. No, it's not a phone. Obviously, this is their first 10.1 inch tablet running Windows 8.1 RT, and we're going to look at it now. So here it is, the Nokia Lumia 2520, available on Verizon Wireless and AT&T, unlike Microsoft Surface 2, which is going to get mentioned a lot in this review for what will become obvious reasons. This one is sold by carriers. There is no Wi-Fi version. Nokia has said they don't plan on coming out with the Wi-Fi version. So for those of you who are adverse to contracts or monthly payments for wireless service, this probably isn't the tablet for you. For those of you who need data anywhere, you really don't want to use a MiFi or the mobile hotspot feature on a smartphone, well, this tablet's for you. Sells for $4.99 without contract or commitment, $3.99 with a two-year contract. So you're only saving $100. Uh, obviously, it's really not so compelling to do a contract with this. And the carriers also have their data share plan, so you, you're familiar with your carrier and how that's going to work out. Uh, Verizon starts off with a 4 gig plan that's $30 a month, not too bad. And AT&T has competitive plans as well. Tablet runs Windows 8.1 RT. This is the RT version. Here we go with that confusion again. I know some folks are still confused. RT is not full Windows. It looks and acts like Windows 8, but you cannot install Windows EXE programs. Things like Photoshop, for example, SQL applications, uh, code development software, all those things that install on x86 PCs, which means standard PCs, ultrabooks, desktops, not meant for this. The only apps you can install are ones that are available on Microsoft's App Store on the device. So, uh, for some people that's a limiting thing, for others it's a liberating thing. It also means that you're less prone to getting viruses, those things that infect EXEs typically. That can't happen here. So, lower maintenance has its good points too. And for those of you who are happy with the live tile apps, you do get IE here, both the Metro version with a live tile. And by the way, look at the viewing angles. You can see this clearly, even though we have it laying flat. Wonderful, wonderful display. And you have the desktop version too. And let's pick this up so you can see the desktop. Just tap on their desktop shortcut. And you can see it looks just like your standard Windows experience now with the desktop. And you do have access to the file manager control panel. All those things that are familiar uh, in the desktop, pretty much these things work like Windows 7, so everybody's going to be familiar with your task tray, all that sort of thing. But like I said, no putting regular Photoshop on here, no putting Corel Painter, uh, you get the idea. Metro stores, apps, but notice the shortcuts down there. Aha, uh -huh. the nice thing about RT is it comes with MS Office RT edition, which pretty much has most of the features that you're going to find on regular Office. Not every single feature, but most of them. So you get your Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, Excel, OneNote as well. So for the price, given the fact that nowadays you have to pay for an office subscription or buy it in the box, that's a pretty darn good deal and that's a selling point for RT. What's even better is this is available with a $149 power cover keyboard dock thingy. It attaches right here on this fairly interesting looking magnetic style connector and Unfortunately, Nokia didn't have one to send us for review, but I have seen it and I can tell you that this is a 10.1 inch tablet. There's a reason why Surface is 10.6 inches. Microsoft tried out keyboards and said you really need to go up to 10.6 to get a usable keyboard. There is a difference. The keyboard cover for this is very nice. It has hard moving kind of keys. It's not a touch cover kind of experience whatsoever, but it does feel a little cramped. It does feel like your old 10.1 inch netbook from years ago. The nice thing is it wraps around and creates kind of a folio experience and it adds two USB 2.0 ports and it has a supplemental battery that can add up to five hours of runtime. So that's a nice accessory. That's 149. So you're talking 499 if you don't sign a contract and another 150 for the keyboard. So then you're up to $650. Sounds a little bit more expensive now, doesn't it? Now in comparison, Surface 2 starts at 449. This is for the 32 gig capacity. This is only available in 32 gig right now. So that's the price we're talking about. 449 and then your touch cover and type cover are going to be 120, 130, so a bit cheaper, not a huge, huge difference. So if you might like one over the other, you know, saving 70 bucks or 100 bucks, given the overall cost of either of these, pick the one that you want. 10.1 inch display, front firing speakers are really well hidden right here. There's just little crevices at the bottom and nice loud audio, nice to actually have speakers that fire at you. Got a capacitive home button there with haptic feedback. If you touch it, it gives you a little bit of vibration. Pretty wide bezel around this. Honestly, it's relatively speaking a bigger device than I think it would need to be 
for a 10.1 inch RT device. Got a video chat camera up front over here. And on the back we have 6.7 megapixel camera with Carl Zeiss lens. That's the same camera used in the Nokia Lumia 720. Not bad. By tablet standards, it's pretty good. By smartphone standards, it's not so great. But given that tablets usually have pretty mediocre cameras, not bad at all. Competes certainly well with Surface, too. NFC logo right there tells you, indeed, it does have NFC. Also has dual band Wi-Fi 802.11bgn with MIMO Bluetooth 4.0 and GPS capability. On the side here, let the confusion begin. You see two identical looking holes right here, don't you? Well, one of them is for the charger, which actually uses a barrel pin style charger, not a USB style charger. That's fine with us because it's a higher voltage charger, so it's going to charge quicker than it would if it was USB based. It's 8,000 milliamp battery in here, big battery, so there's a lot to charge. The other one is our combo 3.5 millimeter headphone mic jack. Make sure you get them right. Power down here, headphone up here. Charger is a chunky monkey. It has retractable blades or slide up blades rather. 20 volt, 1.5 amp. Teeny little connector lights up at the end so that you know it's charging. Fits really, really snugly. This is not going to pop out by accident, that's for sure. But if you trip and you snag this cord, believe me, your tablet will fly. The tablet looks very slim and it is 0.35 inches. It looks a lot slimmer than Surface 2 because Surface 2 has squared off edges. Tapered edges make something look thinner. They're actually the same thickness. This is 1.3 pounds versus 1.44 pounds for Surface 2, so it is a little bit lighter. Uh, certainly for something that's running Windows RT, the weight's not bad. Not as light as a one pound iPad Air, but I find it tolerable enough. While we're talking about that, you'd think the tapered thing would be comfortable, wouldn't you, compared to the squared off sides of Surface 2? It's not. The corners actually manage to be pretty pokey in your hands. It's a little harder to grip because it's so thin and so tapered. Surface 2, actually, those straight sides make it very easy to hold. Of course, Surface 2 has a kickstand built in. This doesn't have anything. They're counting on you getting that keyboard dock that I mentioned. That's $149, and that has just one position. For those of you who find single positions limiting, just keep that in mind. Up top, it's really hard to see, but we have one of those little pinhole things that you poke and you get a poking tool in the box and your micro SIM and your micro SD card slot are under here, compatible with cards up to 32 gigs. Having the SIM card under one of those doors is just fine, but having the micro SD card so you might want to pop in and out a lot under a kind of fiddly cover like that where you need a tool or at least a paper clip, that's a little bit annoying. Over here we have the very subtle, shall we say, they barely stick out power button and these are our volume controls up here. On this side we have a micro USB 3.0 port that look familiar to those of you who know the Galaxy Note 3 which has the same port and is comp backward compatible with USB 2.0 ports. This is a host port that means you can use USB peripherals but you're going to have to get a dongle adapter that converts to a full-size USB port. What a bummer they didn't include that in the box so you need something like this. Now a lot of consumer electronics stores sell these they have them on Amazon and it does indeed work we'll test it with a flash drive so you can see so you can use your mice your keyboards those other USB based things hard drives with it as long as it can supply enough power for your hard drive certainly external powered hard drives are the best bet two point 5 millimeter portable hard drives generally are go depending on how much power they consume. And we have a micro HDMI port here also. So just to show you it does work, here is our USB dongle adapter again. Here is a USB 3.0 flash drive. See the nice blue here? Though This is a 2.0 cable, so we'll see how that goes. Got to plug it into the side. Makes a happy little Windows sound, and there it is, the contents of our flash drive. So yeah, it does indeed work. Just not as convenient because you need that little dongle adapter. Not in the box. The Nokia Lumia 2520 runs on a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 quad-core CPU with Adreno 330 graphics. Those of you who are into Android phones, or even the upcoming Lumia 1520 smartphone, uh, that runs Windows will be familiar with that CPU. That, that's what's on the leading edge Android smartphones today. Different from the Surface 2 which runs on a Tegra 4 and these are roughly comparable CPUs. Now I know people get into their CPUs just like they get into their preferred OS and 
Some people just adore Snapdragon or Tegra 4. I can tell you they both benchmark pretty similarly. I actually find the Surface 2 a little bit smoother, but then again, Microsoft gets to put a lot of optimizations in the operating system for that. Still, overall, this is very snappy, very responsive. Now, benchmarks for Windows RT are not exactly plentiful. There's no PC Mark 7, for example, but there is 3D Mark the Ice Storm test. And on the Ice Storm Unlimited test, it scored 15,758. Very, very respectable. And that's about 70 points more than Surface 2. So they're both actually pretty close. For Sun Spider, the JavaScript test, where the lower numbers are better, scored 515. Surface 2 scored 402. Both of those are excellent numbers, but you can see how these things are going to bounce back and forth. Primarily Nokia went with the Snapdragon 800 because they are a phone company and that's a popular processor to use in phones. The Tegra 4, less LTE 4G options there, so not as good a pick for a product that's going to have integrated LTE. Now, as I mentioned, this has 32 gigs of storage. That does not mean you get 32 gigs to use for yourself because the operating system and associated programs that come with Windows take up some space. You got a little recovery partition on there. Out of the box, we had 17 gigs free. Now, I put Asphalt 8 trial on this. That alone is 1.3 gigs. That's going to take up some space. A couple of other smaller programs, and now we're down to 14.5 gigs. That might sound unusable to you, and personally, I always like the 64 gig version of RT when I can get it, but it's not all that bad either because, well, RT programs typically are not that big. Other than something like a really cutting-edge 3D game, they're fairly small. It's not like installing the Adobe CS Suite, which is going to take up to 14 gigs of space. You can't even do that here. So a little less important. Of course, you can put media on a micro SD card, too, so you can put your videos on there, your photos, that sort of stuff. The display on this is gorgeous. Full HD, 1920 by 1080. It's an IPS display with Nokia's clear black technology. And indeed, the blacks are nice and black. Text is very sharp. Supports multi-touch. Of course, you can do things like pinch zooming. Also very bright for those of you who need to use this outdoors, which makes sense maybe with the 4G LTE model particularly, because if you need data anywhere, it means you may be on the go outdoors. If that's you, this has over 600 nits of brightness. So very bright, wildly bright, uh, retina-inducing pain kind of brightness if you use it indoors and crank up the brightness all the way. Lovely, lovely display. Now Surface 2 also has a lovely display, but it doesn't get that bright. It's at 300 nits. So for those of you where brightness counts, keep that in mind. Right now we're using the desktop version of IE. Flash Player is built in for both the Metro and desktop version, so you have full compatibility. And this leads into the Windows App Store. There, there are about 100,000 applications right now in the Windows App Store. 100,000 is a lot, but there's still some key players missing. Popular things like Flipboard are showing up, and you've got Evernote. Quite, quite a lot to choose from, but you know, keep in mind for mobile operating systems, a lot of apps are making up for the fact that you don't have a full web browser. So anything you can do via a web browser, whether it be accessing Dropbox, any online service, Amazon Instant Video, you can do that using the web browser here. So might not be as limiting as you think. Speaking of the App Store, this is what it looks like for those of you who haven't seen it. And as you can see, Flipboard is new, so it's being featured. Asphalt 8 is also available there. Photoshop Express. This is a very, very, very pared down version of Photoshop for the desktop, but it's better than nothing, isn't it? We'll take a look at that. Games are available. Certainly there's a lot of casual games, fitness stuff, a bunch of Nokia recommended things. And Nokia does include a couple of things like Nokia Video Director. It's not exactly iMovie, let's put it that way, but it's basic video editing. You get Nokia camera and you get the Windows camera. Nokia does this with their phones too and it's just confusing as all heck because you have two different camera apps and you try to remember what does what. In the case of the Nokia camera application for this, other than changing aspect ratio, it really doesn't bring anything to the table. So I personally just stick with the Windows application. Skype is now a Microsoft product, so of course you get that. You get good integration with all Microsoft services here as well. SkyDrive, all that sort of thing. Very handy if you're going to use the Office Suite because you can sync everything to SkyDrive. And all the standard Metro apps are available on board. Nokia has a couple of other value-added applications. I think that probably the, the most exciting one for a lot of people is going to be Nokia Here Maps, especially for a device that you're going to be using anywhere that has a GPS and LTE. So here is Nokia Here Maps. We're looking at the city of Dallas, and you can turn different POIs on and off, which is pretty neat. Attractions, movies, restaurants, places to stay, and they'll pop up right here. Fast, quick, responsive, very nicely done. 
And for those of you who are wondering what Office looks like here, we've opened up Word so you can see it. It looks very familiar if you've used Office 2013. And you can bring up all of your menus over here. So it's really quite powerful. And likely you're not going to be spending your time with the on-screen keyboard, but this is what it looks like should you actually choose to do so. Since this is running Windows, you get good USB support for USB keyboards if you choose not to get Nokia's keyboard cover. And you can also use Bluetooth keyboards too, which I think is a pretty convenient way because you can just prop this up on a stand at a convenient angle and then put the Bluetooth keyboard close to you on the desk or in your lap if you want. Obviously, this is not the most lap-friendly thing. And even with the keyboard cover, it's not super-duper stable. It's not really as well designed for the lap, say, as Surface 2. Now we're going to test out Asphalt 8. And by the way, the speaker volume is only at 30% right now because this thing is so bloody loud, you wouldn't believe it. We'll turn it up a little bit so you can hear. Not oomphy oomphy bass, but it's a 10 inch tablet. Certainly plenty loud though. Well, it looks like Asphalt 8 is not completely compatible with the Lumia just yet or the Snapdragon 800, but you can see we've gone beyond Instagrammy looking here for bizarre graphics. Steering works. It's not accelerometer based on Windows. You use the touchscreen instead, but, well, there's that. Let's try a different game instead. What do you think, guys? So, Riptide GP seems to work a whole lot better. I'm not very good at using the touchscreen controls, though. I'm used to the accelerometer based. And they're both over here in the corner. This is nice and smooth. Pretty well optimized for the mobile OS sort of CPUs like the Tegra and the Snapdragon. And again, those speakers were only at 30% volume right now because they're so loud. So there it is, a little gaming, which typically 3D gaming is one of the most demanding things you can do with the tablet. It works fine. The back of this is good old polycarbonate. Nokia, Nokia loves their polycarbonate. This is obviously a matte black finish. Verizon will have it also in red. You know Verizon, they're big red, so they got to have it in red. It, it looks really very cool. It's like Ferrari red. It is glossy, however, so you've got something with tapered, rounded sides and being glossy, too. It's a little bit holder, harder to hold on to, and it shows fingerprints more. AT&T will have the black version. Overseas, you guys might be lucky. You might get cyan. You might get white. It has options as well. Tablet feels pretty sturdy. I mean, if you try really hard, you contortion it, but why would you want to abuse your devices? You know what I mean? It, it's, it's nice. It's well made. It's not the vapor magnesium. You could kill somebody with it design of the Surface 2, but it's certainly nice enough. It looks like a nice premium product. Battery life is good on this. 8,000 milliamps is a lot of juice, and it does just as well as Surface 2 and other leading 10-inch tablets. Nokia claims 10 hours of use, mixed use time, and in fact, we found that, and that's with brightness set at about oh, 40%, which is plenty bright enough for me for indoor use. That's really, really bright. So who's a Nokia Lumia 2524? Well, obviously, first off, anybody who's looking for a 10-inch, fairly portable tablet. Particularly, I think that this is going to appeal to those of you who want MS Office, since it's included, built in, and you're familiar with the whole Windows experience the desktop, the way the file manager works, the control panel, all that sort of thing. You also, even though it's an inconvenient micro USB size port, you do get a USB host port here for using peripherals, and it's not too hard to find a connector to get going with those kind of peripherals on this. And between this and Surface 2, really, I think it's going to come down to whether or not you want 4G LTE built in more than anything else. For $50 extra, you're getting the LTE in here. Personally, me, I wouldn't worry about that so much because I'd use the mobile hotspot on my phone or a MiFi, more versatile, not adding more devices onto my contract, that sort of thing, but that's up to you. For those of you who really use LTE heavily, it is handy to have it built in. And of course, you could pick an Android tablet too. Now, we haven't seen as many 10-inch tablets coming out this year. It seems like a lot of manufacturers are focusing on making Windows tablets right now, but there's certainly a viable alternative, especially if you don't enjoy the Windows 8 experience. You'll still have access to the file system, and some of them have USB host ports, but support for USB peripherals is more limited. So for those of you who like those kind of creature comforts to use keyboards, mice, game pads, you name it, all those USB things that 
thin surface has certainly its appeal. And between this and the iPad, well, the iPad is a great product, but obviously it's a mobile operating system similar to the iPhone, and you don't have access to the file system, more closed down kind of ecosystem. You certainly can be productive. There are MS Office compatible suites that are available for the iPad, but really this is more straightforward if you live in office for those of you who are looking for that kind of experience. So that's the Nokia Lumia 2520 here in the U.S. It's available on two carriers, AT&T and Verizon Wireless. And as I said, if, you're, if you really need 4G LTE everywhere, you don't want to use a mobile hotspot, then this is a, certainly a compelling alternative to Surface 2. And uh, if you're looking at this compared to an iPad or any other mobile OS tablet, obviously you get a little bit more of that familiar Windows experience, if you think Windows 8 is familiar. I know some of you are still avoiding Windows 8, but the power of the file manager, you get Office built in, so certainly some selling points here. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website to read the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.